Hey folks, it's the blind guy and I thought I'd do another war chest strategy video for you guys since I haven't done one for a while. I just had a pretty cool game against Cassius CDC. So that does not mean Center for Disease Control. That is one of the Canadian, I guess, uh, I think they're a Reddit group or a Canadian, at least a Canadian club on here. And they're usually pretty good players. Uh, Cassius has made Grand Master. We actually have very similar ranking, um, except they have won. On my other account, I went about 70%. They've won a little more than that, 73 or so, and they've made it above 4,000 as well. So should be pretty evenly matched. I kind of figured I would actually lose this one because I had to play first. And when you have two opponents that are fairly evenly matched that advantage of going second makes a big difference i bet it's about 60 percent to 40 percent win um win totals if we could look that up but we did uh this is not a random game we did choose elimination draft i eliminated the light cavalry and he eliminated i assume cassius is a boy i'm not sure about that but i'm just gonna call him he he eliminated the warrior priest and so that gave me first shot at the mercenary and then they took the um, crossbowman and the royal guard and then we ended up with I ended up with archer footman and knight or excuse me swordsman and then they ended up with lancer and marshal now, I don't like playing with the Lancer, but I really dislike playing against a Lancer. It's the one unit that really seems to throw me off sometimes. And you'll see this game, it ends up actually helping me out in kind of a weird way. So we'll just work through it here. Remember, I have to go first, so that gives him the, uh, the advantage of being able to flip the initiative and getting those two turns in a row, which is huge. And my general strategy here was to actually focus on using the swordsman so I wanted to do and then I could bring in the mercenary later to try to mop up what damage the swordsman had done um, and you'll see that actually it doesn't really work all that well but uh, here we go so recruiting swordsman bringing the swordsman out on the other side from the royal guard because that swordsman's biggest strength is being able to hit a single unit and replace it at the spot that was on well, you can't do that with the Royal Guard, so I always like to bring the Swordsman out on the other side of the map from the Royal Guard. And I'm going to bring out my Mercenary as well. He brings out the Crossbowman. That's not ideal for me because the Crossbowman is a strong matchup against the Swordsman. They both have five units, but the Crossbowman can kind of stay back and just ping at the Swordsman. The swordsman is really strong if he can get close to the other unit, and that's hard to do with the crossbowman, but that's just the way we had to do it here. Um, he's obviously gonna go strong on uh, crossbowman, which is the way I would play it as well. That makes sense. I'm gonna bring in my archer. Normally I would bolster my archer out of the game, but I figured with the crossbowman I might need that distance. And so I'm gonna bring him up to here just to cover this spot right here to keep from an, him from moving on to an easy shot at my uh, base there. So what guys like to do is they like to take that crossbowman and put him right here and just kill you as you appear on this control marker here. So I wanted to try to at least slow him down from doing that. That I mean eventually that archer's not going to be a threat to him but um, that was my goal. He brings down the royal guard that's standard to try to take this spot here. Did not surprise me at all. I, uh, I'm i just gonna bolster out my footman. Now he gets me here, because I, I normally, what I should have done, well, either way I was in trouble because I didn't draw one of my swordsmen. So he moves over here and uh, pings my uh, my swordsman, which, which sucks, because having five swordsmen is way better than having four. But. So I at least moved here, hoping that maybe he would flip the initiative so that, because maybe if I draw, if I draw an archer, I would 
I would eliminate him, or he would have to control the base and then be eliminated. But he doesn't actually flip it, and he gets kind of lucky because I did not draw an archer. I drew two swordsmen. So I bring the swordsman out, and then here is where I get pretty, pretty lucky. So this base, this, this crossbowman is con is locking down this base right here, and that's a problem because my mercenary right now with losing a swordsman, my mercenary is my best unit by far because it, it still has five units. So I can't get on this base and just have him eliminate me. So what happens here is. I think he gets a little impatient because he jumps down here. I guess I, I shouldn't say that. I think he makes the right move because I could start hitting his crossbow in with that archer. So what he does is he takes my archer with his lancer. But then what I do is that now, because he only has one lancer, I know it's going to be there for a bit. So that allows me to get that mercenary onto that spot and use the lancer as a shield from the crossbowman. And so then what I do is take control with the knight. And then I know that if I if I stay here, he's going to draw that lancer and just hit me and move. And then all of a sudden I'll be in danger from this way. So what I do is I've, I figure I've already lost a swordsman. He's not going to be my strongest unit right now. So I'm going to move him there, which does two things. It pins the lancer there. So he has to either get out of there or uh, bolster, which he's not going to do. And it makes it so this the crossbowman has to stay here or this knight's going to just end up on that spot. And so that gives me time to see he has to start dealing with that knight. Uh, excuse me, swordsman, not knight. He starts having to deal with that swordsman. And so I've just got to race now his royal guard to that control marker, which I get there first. And then I can recruit my mercenary. I'm not too worried about this because it's only got one of those so the chances of him drawing it before I can control are pretty low. So I get on there. He attacks my mercenary. I cap with the mercenary first because it's the threat. It's the one that only has one. This guy's bolstered so he's not going to be removed. Control with the mercenary. He then moves on with the crossbowman and then I can win the game with the footman. So I think if we had played again, Cassius would have probably beaten me. But sometimes, sometimes even when you have to go first, you get a little lucky when a Lancer provides a shield for you. So in the comments, let me know what you guys think. Uh, have you seen something like that before? I've seen it done. I have done it a few times with the scout. You can pop a scout in front of you. And use him as a shield but I don't know in all my games if I've seen a Lancer get stuck like that and actually help me out um, so there is I guess sometimes where I appreciate the Lancer but usually not I struggle against that unit so also let me know in the comments what you guys think of the Lancer do you use it often um, the biggest thing I have issues with it is if the units bolstered you eliminate one and then you're stuck there where you can't get onto the control marker using it anymore. So it's a, it can be a frustrating unit at times, but it can also be extremely tough when a good player can get it and ping pong around in here and just eliminate a bunch of guys. So let me know your thoughts, and I hope that, guy, that helps you guys out a little bit. And if you want to support a video, just shoot me an email using the description in the, the email address in the description. And I hope you guys are well, and I'll see you on the next episode of A Blind Guy's View. Later's on the Menjay. Later's on the Menjay.